Some new studies just came out suggesting that GLP-1 medications increase cancer risk. Of course, it's more nuanced than that. So there was one review of a bunch of different smaller studies that were all observational that suggested that when you control for things like other blood sugar control and all that, cancer risk goes up in certain non-obesity associated cancers. That's a mouthful. Basically, when you remove potential confounding factors here, people on GLP-1 medications, especially those on them for longer periods of time, had an increased cancer risk. There are a lot of reasons why it's more complicated than this. Number one being, those studies used older GLP-1 medications, things like liraglutide, lexithymic all them. Does it mean that more potent ones may have a stronger cancer risk? Maybe. Does it mean that stronger ones have a lower cancer risk because of the greater weight loss? Maybe. That's number one. Think about the things that increase cancer risk. In general, obesity is associated with a number of cancers, but not necessarily just because of carrying extra body weight. It's because of what that extra body weight does. Raises inflammation, makes you insulin resistance, your insulin levels are higher throughout the day, also affects your sleep quality, makes you less likely to exercise, etc. Stack all those up and reverse it. What's that going to do likely? Lower your cancer risk. And then on top of that, you might have issues where people who are at higher risk of cancer are then put on obesity medications because it's like, hey, we got to get you ready for X, Y, and Z treatment. We'll see if we can control your blood sugar better and help you lose weight. In those cases, that's going to be a reverse causation here in terms of the data. We're going to look at the data and say, oh my goodness, it causes cancer. But in reality, people who are at high risk of cancer are just more likely to put on these medications. It doesn't mean it's not true though. It doesn't mean there's not a higher cancer risk. So you need to factor in things like family history, personal history, and those confounding factors in terms of, all right, if you are say BMI of 25 and you have a decent muscle mass, but on the lower end, you have more body fat, which is why it's kind of a skinny fat 25, not a muscular athletic 25. And you're already sleeping pretty well and you already exercise and maybe you smoke. GLP ones may not be worth it at that point because the little incremental weight loss may be offset dramatically by the increased cancer risk because of that duration of signaling and the lack of improvement of the risk factors that contribute to cancer. On the flip side, if you are somebody without a major cancer risk, both from family and personal history, you're sleeping poorly with sleep apnea. You have high body fat percentage that's you know making you just aches and pains all the time. You are insulin resistant or have diabetes. All these things, if you can reverse those with these medications and then increase your ability to exercise, what is that going to do for cancer risk? I can't say for certain, but most likely it's a wash or improvement, plus all the other benefits in terms of cardiovascular health, brain health, all those changes in the long run.